Well, for more on this, let's cross now to Warsaw to speak with our correspondent there, Gulliver Cragg. Uh, Gulliver, Tusk uh, certainly sounding rather jubilant there. Are we sure he's going to be able to form a viable coalition? Well, he certainly thinks he is, and so did the other members of his party, various MPs that I spoke to yesterday evening. What they said is that, according to the exit polls, the three opposition parties that grouped together calling themselves the Democratic Opposition and made it clear before the election that they would form a coalition after the election, if that was possible, have got an overall majority when you put them together, and quite a big one in the lower house of the Polish parliament. The gap between them and the currently ruling Law and Justice Party is around 40 seats, even if you add the seats of the far, far right, if you like, the Confederatia Party, who had said that they wouldn't form an alliance with peace anyway, but some were speculating that you would, even if you add their seats, the Loring the ruling Law and Justice Party is still far short of a majority. This is really a remarkable result, if confirmed by the official results. So far, about a quarter of the votes have been counted, so it's not really enough to go on, but there don't seem to be any surprises. It looks like confirming the exit polls. As Donald Tusk said last night, a year ago, nobody believed this was possible. A month ago, people were still putting their bets on Law and Justice winning a historic third term. And it's also worth reminding viewers is that during its eight years in power, law and justice has done quite a lot to erode democracy in Poland, and that includes taking full control of the public media, which were a propaganda outlet for the law and justice party. Also publicly owned companies like the railways, like the post office, uh, like all in petrol stations, the biggest chain of petrol stations in the country, were obviously campaigning for the ruling party. Though in the case of all that may have backfired because they drastically reduced the price of petrol just before the elections. Everyone went to stock up and they actually ran out. Um, but uh, certainly the odds were um, in a way stacked against the opposition in this election. And nevertheless, it does look like, as Donald Tusk put it, they did it. And Gulliver, what impact are we expecting these results to have on the EU and also separately on the war in Ukraine? Well, as one um, member of Tusk's party put it to me last night, uh, the way he said it was, we're back. It means Poland wants to be back centre stage in Europe as a reliable and cooperative partner. These eight years with Jarosław Kaczynski's party in power in Warsaw have been marked um, by repeated arguments between Poland and the European Union in a very antagonistic relationship. The um, Tusk-led coalition promises to undo the reforms that the European Commission said were anti-democratic. Uh, restore the independence of the courts, restore uh, the independence uh, of the public media, the editorial independence of, of the public media, and basically um, make Poland a new centre stage player in Europe. Um, it's going to be difficult for them to undo all of those reforms. And also the country remains very divided and there are still a lot of people who are very unhappy about this and wanted peace to uh, get a, a third term. But symbolically speaking, it's also very important for Europe. Poland is the fifth largest country in Europe and it's shown that this kind of democratic backsliding can be reversed. This election uh, also, in terms of the symbolic value of it, was marked by the highest turnout ever in Poland, 72%. So that sends a message also to uh, countries like um, Hungary and Slovakia, which are ruled by populist governments that are antagonistic towards the European Union. They're now two small players, really. They don't have uh, this large neighbour on their side. In terms of the war in Ukraine, well, both sides um, of the argument in Poland are pretty supportive of Ukraine. But in recent weeks, Weeks, uh, the Law and Justice Party had certainly started making a few anti-Ukrainian noises, but that was probably in a bid to try to stop losing votes to the uh, further to the right. Um, so, um, in terms of the war in Ukraine, perhaps it's not the biggest difference, but certainly having Poland as a cooperative player in Europe is going to be better for European uh, unity um, in terms of its approach to what's going on just to the east of uh, the Ukrainian border. Gulliver Cragg reporting live there from Warsaw. Thank you very much.